Well, you have expressed hesitation towards the proposal by the Cabinet Secretary for Education, Professor George Magoha, to reintroduce corporal punishment in schools. And your school of thought is we cannot use violence to drive out violence in schools. Talk to us about that. Uh, it's not even a school of thought. It is the state of the law, as it is currently with the Children's Act, that uh, has outlawed caning and all forms of corporal punishment. And this has been done within the context of the UN resolution through UNESCO, uh, which Kenya, among 128 under country, other countries, are signatories to. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it has been implemented in Kenya and legislated, if we have to get back to it, then we have to undo the legislation that is in place. And in any case, since uh, that has been implemented, we cannot go back to the same thing because there are more dire uh, uh, repercussions of the same. Uh, because the children are now more and more aware of their rights, they're aware about the law, they're aware about the international recommendations. And we are, we, we are superintending a very enlightened lot of students who know their rights. So when we get back to introduce corporal punishment, you are simply telling teachers and students to fight. Mm -hmm. And li highly likely that students can end up even killing teachers. So we, we might brew an other conflict that is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And in any case, if in our civilization process, we have elevated our student management system to shift away from inflicting pain and comply with the the, the universal practices and look at it for example in the united states a child is not supposed to be caned even at home and if a parent canes a child or inflict any pain to any child that child is free to call the security apparatus and that child will be taken over by the state yeah, that, that is how serious the issues of children are globally mm -hmm. so we cannot just uh, wake up one morning and and discuss casually about uh, corporal punishment it is something that has been taken away and to bring it back will be it's impossible we should not even discuss it yeah now we've been seeing a lot of tension and and ease in schools one month into reopening every single day or rather week we are hearing stories of dormitories being burnt and unrest in school let's briefly talk about what do you think because we've been a teacher ask. before what is ask. causing the unrest and uh the proposal by the ministry of education to expel children and not um enroll them in other schools if they've been expelled in schools that they burnt yeah the tension that we are seeing in school are the side effects of the prolonged closure of school remember these kids had engaged in different activities either they were border border riders they were engaged in uh labor activities or engage in their own free life. We saw others socializing by getting into parties, home parties, some mobilizing resources and traveling as far as Malindi. Right now, that freedom is suddenly curtailed and we expect this type of reaction. The question is, did we prepare for this type of reaction from children? Mm -hmm. Definitely no. And that is why we have to deal with a case by case basis and look at the best options because education under the constitution section 53 is a is a right to every child so you cannot withdraw it and block any child from accessing education remedying uh errant uh behavior of students is acceptable but one of the steps of remedying is not barring them completely from uh, attending schools because that would be uh, countermanding and going against the constitution and going against the basic education act which is very clear even a parent who obstruct a learner from attending school a child who is chased out of school because of non-payment of fees let us live with the uh, legal status and the provisions of the constitution and deal with errant students uh, in a remedial manner uh the burning of dormitories and, and this is a big question we need to ask 
and we invite everybody to apply the the, 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 the their mental understanding and from us where we sit as teachers uh in terms of psychology when you look at teachers students burning dormitories in 2014 they're burning in 2015 2016 2017 2018 2019 they're still burning dormitories 2020 uh they were in school for a short time now that they've gone back to school they're burning dormitories why are they not burning classrooms why are they not burning laboratories or even <laughs> their buses that tells you something that it is almost right as a country to abolish uh boarding education systems and uh, let, let's join the other civilizations like the global north where uh students are the scholars it is time we begin raising our children by 50 50 sharing of time between home setting and school setting Briefly, but, before before we delve deeper into boarding day schools, you've mentioned children as sort of uncomfortable and rebelling against boarding schools. Is it that the conditions in the boarding schools are too brutal or or it's just unbearable? If they are burning dormitories and if and that is the most consistent place, then it tells you that they're not comfortable about it. Now mm -hmm. with the, with the hundred this one is 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 one of the obvious lessons that we got in the COVID-19 that uh, ensuring social distance is not possible because we have over congested our schools mm -hmm. and this has been coupled with some of the latest uh, unstructured policies like 100% transition you force an admission into a school uh, maybe double uh, admission and you have not expanded the dormitory facilities then what we expect is students sleeping in twos or sleeping in triple deckers other than double deckers and and definitely the truth of the matter is majority of our students may be very uncomfortable in their dormitories uh within in many schools in kenya and uh, and they're reacting to that yeah and when they react to that we should address and i don't think this is one item that even if social distance were not achievable in class when we were preparing for reopening of schools we should have heavily reconsidered the congestion in dormitories and see ways of remedying that was not done and so this problem might not go away very soon i've seen today about uh, seven or eight or so schools have been involved in uh, arson and burning of dormitories so it's it's a problem that unless we take it head on now and look at the immediate solutions and long-term solutions we will continue talking about it in the media every, okay. through and through mm -hmm. finally as we wind up i want to find out from you you've mentioned uh facing our boarding schools and taking these kids to day schools and uh co-sharing of that time 50 percent of the time at home 50 percent at school how do you propose we do this phasing out of boarding schools and public schools and day schools and how do we ensure that the day schools operate at the maximum levels academically and quality wise as boarding schools have who told you that boarding schools are operating better quality wise uh, than day schools this we've the seen the results with, during kcse is, all the good schools the stigma, that top the charts are the boarding stigma. national schools this is the stigma we have created and we have uh, classified schools and we have created inequality and uh, let me bring this to your attention the entire global north that is europe and north america students are day scholars and all their schools infrastructure are are well 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 uh well built and to 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 the extent that you cannot even differentiate the infrastructure facilities of a school and a university mm -hmm. but here we are we are glorifying and worshiping boarding schools we take a fraction only of our learners for example if we take secondary schools uh 70 percent of the learners are day scholars 30 percent are boarders we have classified schools national schools extra county schools county schools uh day schools Th this is stigmatization it is time 
we put all the children at bar and equity and we do what the global north is doing make a school next to the doorstep of every learner uh, of high standard and of quality and from the basic at, in, at least in the entire basic level let the learners commute between home and school so that they have time every day with the parents it's important in their character formation it is important in the in the psychological development and uh, so that let the teachers do the, the the core business of teaching between eight and five yeah because what we had what we've done in kenya is that we have surrendered children to teachers they do both teaching and absolute parenting which should not be the case number two uh the boarding schools have outlived their usefulness because in the entire continent of africa boarding schools were encouraged to keep girls uh who, so that they're not subjected to customary practices like fgm and and the boys so that they're not subjected to activities of wrestling and community activities that is what it was during those missionary times and early times of independence where we are now we don't need that we are past that we are way away from uh such and therefore we have also to reduce the cost of education boarding comes with cost and boarding has become a strategic entry point for a do business entrepreneurs and that's why there's a rise in private schools and the private schools to make profit it must be boarding in nature so these are things that we need to uh, deal with at the moment and get down to equity within the sustainable development agenda goal of towards equitable and quality lifelong education for all equity equity and uh, quality education uh, for all the children mm -hmm. can be uh, can be accessed easily through day schools and where children are properly uh properly raised through uh strong interaction of the household or the home with the schools okay that is what we need to do mm -hmm. i think kenya uh we are being nudged from the behavior of students the burning of dormitories that we have to move forward in the process of our civilization and in the manner in which we deliver our education we must wake up and conform with some of the global best practices which many countries have done rather than struggling to move backwards and we begin dreaming of going back to ken children who are too aware that they cannot be ken and they cannot be ken anymore mm -hmm. that is not the way to go educationally that's why we leave it thank you for making time thank you